So I've been fortunate. I've been working on this large-scale project uh, called the Autism Phenome Project for a number of years. And the focus of the project is to try to recruit a large number of children uh, close in time to the age of diagnosis. So our focus is on two to three-year-old kids. And to try to define different biological subtypes of autism. That's the overarching goal. And as over the years, as I've been um, doing MRI scans and collecting MRI images in these families and starting to do preliminary analyses, looking for neural alterations in autism, what really struck me from very early on was all of the differences that we were finding in boys. When I would go and look for those same differences in girls, they weren't there. So, for example, there is this sort of you know, consistently replicated finding in the neuropathology of autism that on average children with autism have larger brains than typically developing kids. And I think if you would ask somebody, you know, what is the hallmark feature of, of neuropathology and autism, that would be something that they would say. Um, in reality, first of all, we only see it in a subgroup of boys with autism. And secondly, we don't see it hardly ever in girls with autism. So that was sort of my first clue that that we really need to be looking at girls separately from boys. And they may have different underlying neural problems. Um, but the issue is that girls are underrepresented in these research studies. And so while we have over six years, we've collected uh, MRI scans in 180 boys with autism, we've only collected 30 girls with autism because of the four to one ratio of the prevalence of autism in boys to girls. And so I think you know, both of these studies and, and what I'm really, the, the direction that my research is going in is to really try to increase the number of girls that we're evaluating in research studies um, to, to directly compare them to boys with autism and see how they're different. Um, just as important is to have typically developing controls that are boys and girls. So we can look at brain differences relative um, within the diagnosis as well as across the genders. It didn't actually start out as a sex difference paper. It was more looking at the corpus callosum and autism. But as I was doing the analyses, it was actually one of the first findings that I was seeing in the girls more strongly than in the boys. And so that's why I got really excited about this, this analysis because I, as I was saying before, everything I was seeing in the boys I could never see in the girls. And so that's when it turned into a sex difference paper because what I was seeing in the girls I was not seeing in the boys. And so the main finding of the paper is that we, we saw pretty striking differences in the organization of the corpus callosum. So um, we saw in the, while both boys and girls with autism had differences in the parts of the corpus callosum projecting to the frontal lobes, there were differences in the patterns of those regions. So whereas the boys had a smaller part of the corpus callosum dedicated to fibers projecting to a part of the brain called the orbital frontal cortex, girls did not. Instead, girls had differences in the fibers projecting to the anterior frontal cortex. And um, while we don't have behavior in the study linked to the, um, to the DTI analyses, uh, we do know that the orbital frontal cortex is more involved in social behavior and reward-mediated behavior whereas the anterior frontal con cortex is more involved in higher order cognitive function. And so it suggests that there may, these, these differences in brain structure may underlie perhaps subtle differences in behavior, at least how autism manifests behaviorally in boys and girls with autism. I think the main point of this, what I would like to bring, or the message to the parents of girls with autism is, enroll your girls in research studies, you know, so that we can really truly understand them better. And the whole goal of the research is to identify, if we can identify differences in the underlying biology or behavior, maybe we can develop treatments or interventions that are more tailored to these specific differences that we see between boys and girls with autism. Maybe there are different behavioral or, or pharmacologic interventions that are more appropriate for one group of children versus another.